When I was nine years old, I was raped by one of my father's employees, which caused a lot of confusion in my mind. Um, I would ask myself, why do men want to have sex with me? And when he told me he would kill me if I said anything, uh, fear set in my mind. And uh, so I really believed I couldn't tell anybody. And this went on for a period of two years. And then shortly after that, my parents had gone through a divorce. And then I eventually would move to Portland, Maine, uh, I think the age of 17. But as a couple of years went by, I was in Daring Oaks Park, and I had met some men there, and they invited me to do some drinking with them. And I did, and I, they invited me back to their apartment. And I was raped by all four of them, uh, repeatedly, one after the other. And I had met a couple of transsexuals in this gay bar. And they would just say things like, you're so pretty, you know, you should, you're too pretty to be a boy, uh, you should start female hormones. And of course I would chew on those things that they spoke to me. And when I was real, real young, even under nine years old, I forgot to mention that my mother used to speak over me. She'd always say, Jeffrey, you should have been born a girl instead of a boy. And when somebody says that to you, you know, you, sh you should have been born a girl and not a boy. Um, I mean, it, it, you just live with rejection, you know what I mean? So when I'd be off playing, I always hear a voice saying, well, even your mother thinks you should have been born a girl. Um, and the turmoil and torment in my mind got so bad that I just accepted it. I was so sick and tired of the turmoil in my mind, of hearing those voices, those lies in my mind. You're a girl. You should have been born a girl. I was so sick of it uh, that I actually just came into agreement with it. I said, you're right, I am. So I got into booze and I was introduced to prostitution and some drugs, cocaine, and started female hormones at the same time all around the age of 18 and 19 years old. And it got so bad that I actually had a nervous breakdown in a nightclub one night and just started smashing my fist on a car. <clears throat> and then uh, shortly after this, I'm trying to <laughs> not cry. So I would eventually uh, move to Boston. I'm now living as transgender 24 hours a day. I think I'm 20, yeah, about 20 years old. I needed a job. I met another transgender in a nightclub in Boston. And the individual said to me, well, I work at a strip joint down in the combat zone. I can get you a job. Well, anyways, I got that job, and I did that job for almost 20 years. Um, a girl who lived across the hall from me, her and I was drinking and doing drugs. And she had lied to me and said something, and it just ended up in a fight. I had a cell phone at the time, and I was going to leave the apartment building. I was just lying to her. I said, I'm going to leave the apartment building and speak to the police. So I went, got to the head of the stairs, and she came running full force and just pushed me head first. And my face smashed the handrail as I went down the stairs. But as I lay at the foot of the stairs, uh, something just miraculously came over me, and I heard a voice say to me, Wow, God had to have been with you. And I really chewed on what I had just heard. You know, I, I really pondered what I had just heard. And I said, wow, you're right. God had to have been with me. Later on that day, I had to go to the emergency room. I was in the emergency room, checked myself in. I was sitting in the waiting room. But I was so severely banged up. My face was swollen. And I said to myself, I'm in so much pain. There's no way when the doctor calls my name, I'm going to be able to go walk with him out of this waiting room. So I looked outside the waiting room, and there was a wheelchair. I said, I have to get in it. So I just simply got up out of the chair, sat just like three feet out of the waiting room and got into the wheelchair. But when I turned around and looked back in the waiting room where I was sitting, all of a sudden appeared before my face a little old woman and a little old man. So as I'm sitting in the wheelchair, I'm thinking to myself, and I glanced down at my body and I said, I said, look at me. I said, where did I get to this point in my life? I said, I hate my life. My life is nothing but doing drugs, prostitution. I don't like myself. 
How did I get to this point? How did I end up with breast implants? I looked down at myself, I said, how did I end up with all this stuff? Why do I have all this confusion in my mind? And I was just wanting someone to love me. And when I looked in that waiting room and I saw this little old woman and little old man, when I looked at him, it was just like something. I just knew that they had such love and concern for me. I don't know how I knew it, but I knew it. And that little old woman came over and put her hand on my shoulder and she said, Honey, do you know Jesus? And at that point in time in my life, I lied to her. I said, Oh yeah, I know him well. I had no clue who he was. So I saw the doctor. The doctor uh, released me from the hospital, and I lived alone at the time. But when I got to my apartment, everywhere in my apartment, I kept hearing a voice. I'd go to my bathroom, and I'd all of a sudden I'd hear this voice saying, Do you know Jesus? I'd run to the kitchen to get away from this voice, and then I'd hear a voice in the kitchen say, Do you know Jesus? I'd run to the bedroom thinking, I'm getting away from this voice. Do you know Jesus? And you know this went on for a period of a week. I was that stubborn. I didn't even answer this voice. And then after a week later, I was so aggravated, I didn't want to hear this voice anymore. Because I didn't know who it was. <laughs> you see, every day I was used to just getting up. I had to be at a methadone clinic by 7.30 in the morning to drink my methadone. Then I'd come home and doll myself up, only to walk the streets to turn a truck. I wanted to get away from this voice because I couldn't do my daily routine because of this voice that I kept hearing. And then finally one day I just yelled at this voice that, and I didn't know it was God. I said, well, you're aggravating me. I said, I can't do anything because you keep asking me this question, do I know Jesus? So I said to this voice that I was hearing, I said, this is what I'll do. I'll turn the Christian TV on and I'll learn about this Jesus. As soon as I did that, he stopped asking me that question. <laughs> so uh, one day I was sitting in my bed. All of a sudden the hand of God just came upon my right shoulder and he pulled my whole life in front of my face. There were 41 pictures. It was like the film out of a camera. And then he said, this isn't you. This is what the devil has done to you. He showed me me getting a nose job done, getting rid of my beard, having my Adam's apple shaved. And when he said that to me, because I went through my life talking to God, there were times I'd talk to God before I even knew God, but I used to cry and say, you know, why do I feel like a girl trapped in a man's body? It was a lifelong torture for 41 years. And one day I was really angry because I wanted to feel different within. I didn't want the desires to do drugs. I didn't want the homosexual lifestyle. I didn't want the transgender uh, identity confusion in my mind. I was really angry because I heard on TV that this Jesus ch changes you from within and does this and does that. Well, I, my heart was crying out, I want that. So I angrily said to God one day, why, why don't I feel any different? I want to feel different. And uh, the next, he was so sweet as he is. He didn't say a word, but the next day I was making my bed and uh, when I tucked in the sheet and I stood up, he said, behold, all old things have passed away. You're a new creation in me. And when he said that, I just knew all the old drugs, the lifestyle, the addictions, everything was gone instantly. And uh, so it's been 14 years now that I've been uh, delivered from the you know, that lifestyle. And the Lord just instilled in my heart a supernatural hunger to read the Word of God. And every time I get in that Bible, I'd hear God speak to me. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. It was just so amazing how He'd reveal things to me, especially show me how much He loves me. I couldn't fathom that. I remember there was a day I just said, you mean to tell me you 
the God who created billions and billions of people. I couldn't believe that he would take time out of his day to talk to somebody who thought that they were so dirty and just so bad, you know, from the prostitution and all that stuff that I had done all those years because I thought I was too naughty, I was too bad. I thought he wanted nothing to do with me. And then, uh, excuse me, that couldn't have been any more for other than the truth. <laughs> he died on the cross for me. The aftermath, the regret, after you know the truth through Jesus Christ, that's the hard part. As far as my, my spirit, my spirit is as perfect and as pure as he is. It's this aftermath to try to live with and deal with it. It's difficult. I don't wish it upon anybody. If I could go back as a little boy and have things different, some things I would have different. Being raped, being a prostitute, I'm kind of grateful it happened to Jeffrey. It's given me a compassion to people that are prostituting who are going through gender identity confusion. I can cry with those people. Those little boys and little girls that are being fondled by people. I have no one to talk to. I can do that. And truly have compassion in my heart. And if I could say to anybody, please get to know God. You know, He loves you. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. I'll never forget when I was reading the Bible and it said, He knew me before I was in my mother's womb. God said, I formed your inward parts. And one day he said to me, he said, Jeffrey, I'm so pleased with you. Oh, it just melted my heart to know how much he loves me and everybody else. And the sad thing is a lot of people doesn't, don't know how much he loves them. There's so many doctrines in this world that says, do what you want, do what feels good. It's so sad. And these little children... All I can say is that's why it's important for parents to really know the truth of God's word. Because it's the truth of God's word that will comfort you and set you free.